but you learned a lot from IAS about uh, RG domain words and uh, Jams. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, so this is work um, uh, that appeared in a recent paper with Davide Gaiotto and Roland van der Veen. Um, the idea was to construct a large class of half PPS domain walls in four dimensional n equals two theories, uh, specifically in, in 40 theories of, of class S, um, meaning they come in string theory or in M theory from compactifying two M5 brains um, on a two dimensional surface C. Um, the duality walls uh, that we construct interpret between different weakly coupled regimes um, of the same 4D theory. Um, well, they don't, they don't need to, but some of the walls we construct interpolate between different regimes of the same 4D theory. So for example, um, you can take two different, uh, two weakly coupled UV regimes where the theory is, is non-abelian, uh, say corresponding in class S language to two different pan decompositions uh, of a certain Riemann surface. Um, or more interestingly, uh, one can try to build a wall uh, that interpolates between a weakly coupled UV regime and an effective Cyberg-Witten theory in the infrared that's weakly coupled in the infrared. Um, these walls uh, have, have different constructions and interpretations um, that play off, each, play off one another quite nicely. Um, in terms of pure field theory, one can try to build such a wall um, by varying the couplings of the theory over space. So you take a direction of space, say x3, um, and vary the coupling between two different domains such that in an appropriate duality frame, the theory is weakly coupled both at the beginning and at the end. Um, if one then varies uh, the coupling sufficiently fast, one can try to isolate three-dimensional degrees of freedom on the wall. And of course, the idea is to try to do this supersymmetrically uh, so that three-dimensional n equals two supersymmetry is preserved and one gets a 3D n equals two theory uh, trapped on the wall. Um, so we identify uh, these trapped theories um, for a huge class of walls. Uh, they are kind of the n equals two variants or n equals two equivalents of the TSU2 or TSUN theories that Gaiotto and Witten described um, as living on domain walls in, in, four, in uh, four dimensional n equals four super ring mills. Um, and these have a beautiful geometric interpretation as coming from wrapping two M5 brains on a three manifold. In particular, on a three manifold with two boundaries where the boundaries are, are surfaces corresponding to the 40 theories. And, and the three manifold provides a cobordism between these two surfaces. Um, uh, the, the tricky part of all this, uh, or one of the tricky parts, uh, which I won't have too much time to discuss now, um, is describing all the right geometric data um, or the boundary conditions on a three manifold um, that, that correspond to the data of the domain wall that one has in mind. Uh, once this is sorted out, uh, one can triangulate the three manifold and construct the corresponding theory systematically uh, by gluing together tetrahedron theories. Um, and we devised a, a, a completely systematic approach to this uh, with uh, Gaiotto and Sergei Gukov, uh, which had a really nice intuitive explanation by uh, Chikoti, Cordova, and Vafa. OK. Um, one of the coolest things coming from this, this relation between three-manifold geometry and three-dimensional theories uh, is something I, I unfortunately won't have time to talk about in this talk, um, namely that, that SL2 uh, Chern-Simons theory on M, in general SL, SLN Chern-Simons theory, um, is, uh, can be understood in terms of the effective uh, three-dimensional theory on a domain wall or whatever that one gets from compactifying brains on M. Um, and this is, of course, very closely related to, to Dan's, uh, Dan Jeffers' talk yesterday. Um, okay. 
Um, in the present context, if one is building a theory associated to one of these domain walls, uh, so in particular, the manifold has two boundaries, which are both the surface C um, that, that a 4D theory is based on. Uh, one gets on the geometric side, uh, I guess these should have been flipped. Uh, one gets on the geometric side a quantization of the moduli space of flat uh, SL2 connections on the surface C. Um, and the 3D geometry itself corresponds to various actions on this moduli space. For example, uh, the, the walls between different UV weak coupling regions uh, generate a mapping, mapping class group action, uh, whereas walls between different UV and IR regions um, give transformations between certain distinguished sets of Darboux coordinates. Uh, for example, complexified functional Nielsen coordinates, functional Nielsen type coordinates, uh, uh, and falk goncharov type coordinates. Um, okay, but the plan today um, is going to be a lot of physics and a little bit of geometry. Um, so I want to first just give examples of how some of these duality wall theories look, um, because I assume they are unfamiliar uh, to to most of the audience. Um, so I'll give examples of how they look, and I'll just I'll say what three manifolds they correspond to, um, roughly. Um, and I'll explain more about the 3D geometry at the end of the talk. Um, after the examples, uh, I'll, uh, I do want to say a little bit physically about why this, what I call the RG wall, makes sense. So our, the RG wall being the thing that interpolates between a UV weak coupling region and uh, an infrared cyborg witten theory in its, in its weak coupling frame. Um, why it makes sense and, and how, to, how to think about it in a few different ways. Uh, and then as I said at the end, I want to discuss the three manifolds and what they mean uh, in terms of 60 compactifications. OK. So the theories turn out to be ridiculously easy. So the simplest example is a pure SU2 um, theory in the four-dimensional bulk. Um, it comes from putting five brains on an annulus um, you can also think of an annulus as a sphere with two punctures with irregular singularities at those punctures for, uh, well, irregular means something specific in, in terms of the compactification. Um, the RG wall theory, the UVIR theory for pure SU2 um, super Yang Mills just consists of two chirals. Um, it has a global symmetry, which is U2, if you think of the theory by itself. But if you want to think about coupling the theory as a meaningful domain wall, uh, that U2 is split into an SU2 times U1, where SU2 gets, should be identified, um, um, SU2 should be identified as um, the gauge group in the bulk on the non-abelian UV side of the wall. And U1 can be identified with the gauge group in the cyber witten theory on the other side of the wall. Um, of course, this, so it's, this is a doublet of chirals under SU2. And in my convention, it has charge minus 1 under the U1. Um, the three manifold looks like this. Uh, it's a cobordism between an annulus and an annulus with some extra data that I will explain later. So topologically, it's absolutely trivial. It's just C cross an interval. Uh, but but you, have to, you have to give a little more than the topology in order to make the compactifications and the field theories make sense. OK. Um, yep, and that's, that's how the wall looks. So again, you gauge. You, so you look at the flavor symmetry of, of this theory on the wall and gauge part of it in the UV bulk, gauge, gauge part of it in the IR bulk. Um, it also, so of course, the, the infrared Sudbury Witten theory um, is, not, is not just a UN gauge theory. Um, it, it's an effective theory that comes with the whole collection of BPS states. Um, and ideally, whatever domain wall theory we have would be able to couple to all of the BPS states in the infrared, and it does, it can. Um, so this this ridiculously simple theory of two free chirals in three dimensions um, happens to have a bunch of hidden operators. And they're hidden because they exist in monopole sectors. 
Um, so meaning that if you turn on um, a background monopole flux for, uh, for, for the gauge fields corresponding to these, these um, flavor symmetries, um, then you start having operators. Um, and they couple to uh, magnetic and dionic and other BPS states in, in the bulk. Uh, and by, by couple to, I mean that an, an, a Toft line with, say, magnetic charge um, in the bulk can end on the domain wall. And of course, where it ends, it's going to create a monopole configuration in three dimensions. Uh, this is not at all obvious that these operators exist. OK, um, so just to give a few more examples, uh, the story basically continues in a similarly simple way. Um, there are different axes. Um, so um, um, you, I would expect The, the, the very, very short answer is, is no. And I'll explain why in about five minutes, uh, which is because when building one of these walls, you have to specify. Uh, you basically land at a point on the Coulomb branch uh, rather than getting everywhere on the Coulomb branch. But you can, you can actually try to move that point around a little bit. Um, and um, get something, probably something like mirror, uh, mirror 3D theories like that that, cor that correspond to different um, different chambers. Um, so um, you you can. So all of that information. I mean, all, all of that information is is part of the entire 3D40 configuration. So what, in particular, so you, you see um, this, this three manifold that, that you're playing with has an end that um, asymptotically looks like C cross R plus. And a double cover of that is, of course, the Seibrig-Witten curve. Um, so so you, you see the cyber witten curve as, as, part of, as part of the full system. And you see all the BPS states that, say, correspond to minimal cycles on the cyber witten curve um, as, as things that can couple to operators in, in the 3D theory. What's the meaning of the cyber witten introducing the voluntary reduces to the cyber witten differential? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There is. So, and, and so, um, I, I mean, you're, you're, you're playing with, yeah, I, I, should, I should go on. Uh, but y yes, so, and, and so, so Chikoti Cordova and Waffe actually explained this, explained this very nicely. Uh, they, they looked at walls, in particular, between different cyber witten regimes. Um, and so, so you, have, you have M2 brains wrapping cycles in the bulk that um, then translate to to BPS states on, in kind of in the asymptotic ends. Um, and so, and yeah, you, 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 can, you can see everything. Uh, the, the differential comes from, uh, from, from reducing, uh, reducing a field. In, it's, it's and it's some harmonic form in, in the three manifold that reduces to a holomorphic form in, in the asymptotic. Um, in the asymptotic end. Um, and I, I wish I had time to go into all of these details, and I do not. Um, so I just want to illustrate that the theories, that, so these domain wall theories are similarly simple for other four-dimensional uh, bulks. So if you take n equals 2 star, so, so it's SG2 plus an adjoint hyper. Um, now you need three chirals on the boundary to make things happen nicely. And you need three chirals because you want op operators that, that couple both to an electric hypermultiplet on the IR side and 
uh, the adjoint hypermultiplet on, on the UV side. And you, need, you just need to be able to create, um, create the couplings. Um, the manifold in this case uh, is a punctured torus times an interval with different data on the two sides of the interval. Um, and for NF equals four theory, uh, you've got six chirals on the wall. Um, again, six chirals because you need to be able to carry all of the flavor symmetry and all of the gauge symmetry of the two bulks. Um, and the manifold is a four punctured sphere times an interval. The eigenvalue of the Yes, uh, and so so I, I didn't I didn't actually change it in the figures, but yeah, so there there are holonomies and flat connections and all of that going on, but I, I'm not I'm not going to say much about it. Yes. Um, okay. Um, so similarly, once you have once you have these UVIR walls, you can put two of them together to build a UV UV wall, uh, and describe uh, so have three D degrees of freedom that are trapped on on an S duality on an S-duality wall or that implement an S-duality transformation. Um, so just very briefly, for, for n equals 2 star, we already know what the answer is. This is, this is TSU2 of Gayoto and Witten. Um, using, using our three manifolds and triangulations, we actually can get a very nice uh, 3D dual or 3D mirror symmetric description of this, um, where um, the theory has uh, explicit SU2 cross SU2 flavor symmetry that's gauged on the two sides. It comes at the price of a monopole operator in the superpotential of the theory. Um, the three manifold now is built by taking two of these punctured torus cross interval manifolds and gluing them together uh, to get something that looks like, well, it's, it's almost the complement of the hop link in the three sphere, uh, but it's the hop link with an extra little bridge. Um, and for an f equals four, the manifold is obtained by taking again two of the RG manifolds, gluing them together. One gets the complement complement of a tetrahedral graph in in S three. Um, and and the theory is basically an f equals four SQED on the wall. Okay, um, those are the examples. Let me say a little bit about physics. So. Um, I'm just going to focus on pure SU2 theory in the bulk. Let's try to create a Janus configuration varying the couplings or varying the parameters of the theory to go from weakly coupled in the UV to far out on the Coulomb branch and weakly coupled in the IR. The only parameter we have to vary is the QCD scale lambda. Um, and I'm going to compare it to some scale mu at which I observed the theory. Um, and so I send lambda. I start with lambda over mu is equal to zero. That's, that's a UV regime. And then I, I go to infinity and move to an IR regime and hopefully push myself far out on the Coulomb branch. Um, while I'm doing this, I need to preserve, or I want to preserve three-dimensional n equals two supersymmetry, which means that the central, the real parts of the 40 central charges have to be constant. Uh, because these, the real parts of the 40 charges are the three-dimensional central charges. Um, these supersymmetry equations, these BPS equations, they, um, they fix the X3 dependence of U, the Coulomb modulus, um, given any profile for lambda. Uh, so I can actually move lambda any way I want. The moduli will readjust themselves along the path so that the, the real parts of the central charges stay constant. And I have one complex Coulomb modulus. I have two real equations. And so it, it completely fixes the dependence of, of the Coulomb modulus u on the x3, in the x3 direction. Um, more surprisingly and very nicely, the final value uh, of the Coulomb modulus doesn't actually depend on how I get there, what I actually do with lambda. If I push lambda to infinity, then it, no matter where I start, I will end up at the monopole point. Um, at, at the end of the flow. Um, and this is the Janus attractor that was in the title of the talk, um, which is great. Near the monopole point, the infrared theory is weakly coupled, and it's weakly coupled in the magnetic duality frame. What determines which point you go to? 
Um, so the three D super symmetry, the, the embedding of the three D super algebra in the um, in the four D super algebra uh, that in particular depends on a certain phase, um, and I can end up anywhere on the circle of marginal stability. Um, in, in this case, I've set the phase to one, and I end up at the monopole point. But it, it's it so it's so th there's there's a phase in the, in the breaking of supersymmetry that 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 tells me where I am on the circle. They are they are flows. These flows. They are flows of U. Are they? They are not the flows with constant uh, constant phase of the central charge. Um. They, they are not. Um, and that's and that's so so the because the imaginary parts are are changing quite a lot. Yeah, but that's. You know. It's 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 a slightly different it's a slightly different condition. It, it's it it reminds me very very much of of the other attractor mechanism. Um, okay. Um, so there's also a cute little thought exercise that one can go through to figure out what degrees of freedom get trapped on the wall. And the basic idea is this. So let's start with the non-abelian or ultraviolet theory. Um, trying to send one side to weak coupling or decoupling the gauge degrees of freedom is, is basically the same as just sticking a Dirichlet boundary condition uh, for the SC2 gauge fields on. And now let's take that theory on a half space with a Dirichlet boundary condition and flow to the infrared, move out, well, move out onto the Coulomb branch and flow to the infrared, um, and ask, how does the boundary condition look? In the bulk, we know there's a usual Higgs mechanism when we break onto the Coulomb branch. Um, so the W bosons become massive. On the boundary, however, um, the breaking of symmetry, SU2 to U1, well, on, on the boundary, the SU2 symmetry is not a gauge symmetry. It's a global symmetry because it's been frozen out. Um, and the Goldstone bosons that should have been eaten by the W bosons um, remain, remain massless. Um, and you expect those to be precisely the trapped 3D degrees of freedom. Um, so we expect a CP1 sigma model in 3D. And that's basically what we had. Um, so the theory, I, the theory I described was two chirals with some global symmetry, but if we gauge, um, if we gauge the IR symmetry in the bulk, then we have precisely the, the GLSM description of, of a CP1 sigma model. Uh, and we can actually make that more precise if we, we switch to the magnetic frame uh, in the IR bulk, which will not happen now. Um, so the last thing I want to say is, rough, is, is what, a little bit about what the, the extra data on these um, on these three manifolds has to be. Um, and so so there's, there's a notion of frame three manifold, which is the right thing for considering compactifications of the 60 um, to come a zero theory. Um, and so, so this came about again, in work with Gayotu and Roland van der Veen, and also uh, in work with, with Sasha Goncharov and Maxim Gabella. Um, the idea is the following. Uh, you define combinat uh, some topological object, a frame three manifold that topologically has its boundary split into two different types. Um, it has a so-called big boundary, which can be a surface with any number of holes. Um, it happens to come with a 2D ideal triangulation. Um, and it's got small, so-called small boundary components, which can be disks, annuli, or tori. Um, and the big boundary and the small boundary uh, glue up along circles. Um, so here's an example of topologically a framed three manifold. Um, the meaning of these boundary components in six dimensions um, is the following. Well, so first we need to remember that in six dimensions we can't actually have boundaries that preserve supersymmetry because it's a chiral theory. Uh, so we need to do something with these boundaries. And what you do with the big boundary is pull it off to infinity, have an asymptotic cylindrical end that looks like some surface times r plus. And all of the spell boundaries, you shrink, and you shrink them into defects of the 2 comma 0 theory, roughly like that. Um, so if we want to create an RG domain wall, we take the ultraviolet theory. Uh, we take a pants decomposition of a surface 
uh, which defines a UV weak coupling regime, and represent that pants decomposition as some three punctured spheres connected by small annuli. Shrink all of, all of the tubes 